introduce everybody to Lewis McLeod, uh, my favourite impressionist, a friend of mine from north of the border. Lewis, a very, very good afternoon and welcome. Hey, mate, hello. Now, listen, um, you may have to start brushing up on a few things because if Boris Johnson is indeed uh, the man who may or may not be on the way out, I mean, what's he going to do? Uh, well, I, I, first of all, I'd like to say a great deal of congratulations for the confidence of my uh, for former member from Berry South, but I still will remain the member for Berry Brothers and Rudd, uh, the greatest wine merchants in the world and, and who supplied so well over these past months, uh, where it really was quite, quite an extraordinary. We've become the Ministry of Pound. Uh, DJs being smuggled in on uh, fridges and suitcases, uh, quite quite extraordinary. But yes. uh, yeah, well, you know, you could say because Keir Starman on, on, uh, on Dead Ringers, Duncan Wisby does a belting Keir Starman. I've never quite been able to. You've, get yeah, his you've voice. always said to me that you don't you know, really do him. It's got that sort of thing, you know. I'm. Uh, I was really impressed by uh, the Mr. Speaker Lindsay Hoyle. <laughs> you know, I'm not quite sure if he's going to hit the, the dizzy heights of uh, sort of John Berko with his oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, today, did, did somebody say, apologise? Yes. You want me to come down there, tongue, tongue, you'll get tongue, you'll feel it right up from my boot as it comes out of your mouth. Listen, Sonny Jim. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's exciting and he's getting really, really, really tough with them, you know. And he's like getting that. stuck like... in. I was expecting him to start throwing people out. I thought I might see a few bouncers <laughs> coming in, you know, just tearing people in and, and you know, dragging them out. Your name's not, you're not getting in unless your name's in the door. Well, actually, pick which one. I, mean, I don't know which side's which right. at the moment. I mean, the thing about uh, Rishi Sunak, of course, as the number one front runner, uh, is yes. that he may be somebody that you'll, uh, you'll be able to practice on. Well, he's got. I, I, I've, I've sort of, you know, I've worked on his voice a little bit, and there's just, I just feel he's still like. It's almost they keep saying things like, "Your statement sounds like it was written by a lawyer," but really, I really am that guy. <laughs> so I don't know if the the humanity of his of his rhetoric will po poke through well enough. But then it doesn't really. But they need somebody. Because Boris has, in the past, I think, had quite a lot of flair and rise, all that. Wah, wah. He's eminently mimicable. The problem mm. is the rest are so bland yes. and uh, there's not really much to grip on them. I mean, people have been complaining to me about Rhys Mogg's body language. I don't know whether you do him. <laughs> do you do Rhys Mogg? Yes, well, I actually find politician of the year... Yes, 1872. <laughs> that, that kind of... I don't know, it's just that calling everybody else, you're just a lightweight. And it's... Ooh, that, that coming from that tone of voice. Yes. Listen here, Sonny Jim. No! Yes. That's I mean, I don't, know many, I don't know many people that could take a personal loan from one of his own companies of £6 million just to help him through Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but he's like a character from Succession. You know, he's, he's the Bryant Cox, but without the shouting and bowling, yeah, you know? Right. Absolutely. And he doesn't go in helicopters because they're too modern. Like, I'm too, you know, to be honest. I'm too tall. Yeah, he can't get in it. Yes, exactly right. Thank goodness, though, that Ian Blackford always delivers. Um, uh, I mean, he's uh, been calling for the resignation of the Prime Minister for years. You know, we've heard Mr. Squeaker, <laughs> Operation Red Meat, this whole Bond villain conspiracy theorem, it's Operation Dog's Dinner, and my dog, Gunga, has eaten it all <laughs> and spat it all over that. Do you remember when he was outside? <laughs> outside the, the, uh, the, the French window. <laughs> How did he make that up? It was so good. It was brilliant. <laughs> we, were both, we were both actually listening to PMQs at the same time. That's right. I had to pull the car over. I thought I was going to crash. <laughs> it was just brilliant. Um, and he's going, Gunga, shut up! Get out! <laughs> I know, I take your point. And then Boris, of course, handed it to him. I think the uh, right honourable member's dog made more sense <laughs> than right. he did. But isn't that isn't that what really the chamber's about? It's about that sparring. It's about laughter. You know, when you used to be able to go into the public ga gallery, my uncle David used to come down to London and sit uh, joyfully witnessing this badinage between sides that was humour-led. It was, it was really, really punchy yeah. and funny. And I think, you know, because I was listening to your comments, I don't know. Oh, he's just frozen. No! Lewis McLeod was frozen. I didn't get to ask him about his new job. Are you back? Uh, you just froze there. Am I back? Am I still there? Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Go on. Did that whole thing. Yeah, I think that his humour, um, the humour rather between sides was really apparent today. And I think Keir Starmer really stepped up and it was quite funny watching the two of them. But I don't know if it's premature to say that to, to laugh is to suddenly consider his, you know, his position over. I think if they do a vote of confidence, I think he'll still win it. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah. But well, it, listen. I, I th- I mean, who who can say? Listen, let's before we let you go because we've got to rush off and get some calls on this. Um, tell us about this new starring role you've got in Hollywood because I've been handed a piece of paper in which it describes you as uh, Scots and Persian as the father of two from Bill's Den. Um, <laughs> where are you going? Ian Black from there. Yeah. Hello, I'm Mike Graham. <laughs> and, uh, I but, used no. to be Mike Graham. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. I'm just lacking a waistcoat. Otherwise, I'm a made guy. Aye. There's um, no. It's, I, I was uh, employed by Matt Berry, the genius of Toast of uh, London, now Toast of Tinseltown. He asked me to play Orson Welles. Really? Uh, and uh, this show, if you've not seen it, check it out. It's on iPlayer. It's on BBC. Um, but my ep's it's the last in the series, and it's a good laugh. I play Orson Welles. That's the kind of show they resurrect. Um, Jim Morrison. They brought back Orson Welles, and I. Play Orson Welles from Welles's Wine House. Are you the and Orson Welles of the Third Man? Yes. Oh, well, if you've, <laughs> depending on your holiday results, it could be the Third Man. <laughs> well, if you don't drink the water, but the, but I, I had um, a great day filming with them, and it was all they based it around the you know they timed it around the COVID lapse or lax. What do you call it? You know the restrictions easing oh, yeah. from getting out of France. Oh, yeah. And I was really lucky because I was just about to get recast, and they got us in because uh, the government you know said, okay, look, you don't need to isolate for ten days. Right. And I got into France for a day and managed to film it. Tremendous. Great stuff. Well, listen, Lewis, good luck. We'll look out for it. Let us know when you're down next and we'll get you in uh, for some more uh, Blackford bashing.